we'd like to share a little bit about who we are and what we're all about. At our church, you will find a community of passionate believers connected, connected by, by our faith, faith in Christ. Christ. We believe the Bible is true. And we strive to present it in a way that's practical. We want to give you something that you can apply to your life now. Let's face it, we're all a work in progress. We are all on a journey, and we invite you to come along. We believe that life change happens through genuine, genuine relationships. So we work hard to create an environment that is loving and accepting. And we want to let you know that this is a church where you can belong before you believe. But above all, we want you to know that no matter where you've been, no matter where you are, God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And there's a place for you here. So get ready. Your experience starts now. Good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you beautiful people here today in this nice, cool, cool atmosphere climbing outside. Just want to welcome all of you to Open Door Church. If it's your first time here, then we'll give you just a way to connect with us in just a moment. I think we've been doing this for 24 weeks since the uh, outbreak has shut us down. But I want to give us a scripture this morning as we get ready to start. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 7, By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. And we've been talking about the armor of God. So I want us to think about that for a moment. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. So we just want to encourage you and challenge you just to really embrace God's word and God's truth and the armor of God we're talking about uh, here uh, this uh, next few weeks. If you're a first time visitor or a guest, if you're watching online for the first time, if you're here in the building with us for the first time, we're going to give you a way to connect with us. If you'll just type in your phone number, 757 320 5615, just type that in and do a text to us, text to connect, then that will give us your information. We can connect with you, we can let you know what's going on here, when our services are, how to connect with us online, etc., etc., and when we're doing anything different. So, again, 757 320 5615, and just hit connect when you do that, and then that will help us be in touch with you, saves you from having to deal with writing anything down, okay? Uh, I want to thank everyone that continued to support us financially. Um, your generosity has is, is, is just uh, been amazing to us. Um, usually when people don't come to church, they don't bring an offering, they don't give an offering, they don't do any tithe or anything like that. But, but you have been faithful and generous, and you've sent your money in. You've uh, done it by mail. You've done it by cash. You've dropped it in. You've done it all any kind of way you possibly can. So we're going to give you a way to do that as well. If you'd like to give to the church, Open Door Church, you can go, and here's a, the five ways there you can give, and um, there may be another way, actually, but that's the five ways, or you can just do 757-320-5555, and that's a text that'll help you set up how to do that, um, but cold hard cash still works, paper checks still work, coins still work, and thank God, aren't you glad the coin shortage has gone away, they finally got coins all over again, everybody thought, the end of the world is coming. Did you know that? Everybody thought the end of the world is coming. And I told people, I said, when I was in Europe a few years ago, I was, uh, I was buying something in, um, in Holland. Um, somewhere in Holland, I was a little shop. And uh, I was supposed to be getting um, two cents back off the nickel. Well, they didn't give me my two cents back. I said, you owe me two cents. They said, no, we don't owe you two cents. I said, what do you mean you don't owe me two cents? You owe me two cents. He says, nope, we just round everything up or we round everything down. So I was under a nickel, so you don't get it back. So that might happen to us here before it's all over with. But anyway, there, the coin shortage seems to be over, so the end of the world is not here. So everybody, don't freak out, don't panic or anything like that. We're going to still be here uh, preaching the gospel for a little bit longer and doing the Lord's work for a little bit longer. But again, we do appreciate your giving. If you're here in the building and you brought an offering with you or you brought a gift uh, for the church, then there's baskets as you come in. There's a basket when you leave today. Um, for if you're a guest for the first time, when you leave today, you'll be going out the door to this back far right-hand side. So um, in one door, out the other door, kind of like Walmart, right? You go in one door and out the other door. We're not quite like Lowe's yet where you can just go in anywhere you want to. Um, 
We want to let you also know that every week on Tuesday and Thursday, and if anyone would like to help do that, we feed families here in the church or we feed individuals. We, um, we partner with the city and with restaurants, local restaurants, and we give out about 65 meals every Tuesday and Thursday. So we have a couple of ladies that gather out there. They fill the parking lot up, and in about 8 to 15 minutes, every meal is gone. I mean, it's like you've never seen anything go away so fast. But that, those meals go away really, really fast. Um, but if you want to help with that, then that's great. Also, we have a food ministry that goes on here. We have a basket in the back back there. The third Saturday of every month, we distribute, I think, about 25 or 30 baskets. So if you'd like to give food, uh, non-perishables or whatever, or money, contribute. That way you can note that on your uh, any kind of giving. And we'll be sure that we'll make sure that we get the foods necessary for the families that we feed. And uh, we had a great blood drive this week. I think they had like 30-some spots available, and I think they they got about 80% of them filled, so we had a big blood drive here. They're going to do another one in November, the first of the year. So if you'd like to give blood next time around, then just be watching for when that comes. If you notice, uh, the bass player that would be there is gone, and the, the blonde, long-haired blonde on the red mic, she's gone. They got married on Friday. So they're <laughs> celebrating somewhere the joys of marriage. So I'll be glad when this is over because... Uh, that'd be back to normal. I don't have to play the bass anymore, all right? So you, you, I'm the, really the third-string bass player, technically. I'm, I'm the worst of the bunch. Um, so anyway, I just do my best. So if you hear me make a mistake, then just please, please pray for me. If you play bass guitar, we'd be glad to talk with you, okay? Be glad to incorporate you. Um, if you look to my left over here, we have a new going to lead sing this morning. This is our, she usually plays our violin or she plays keys, but today... This is Alexandra. We call her Z. Her husband is over, is Jordan over on the drums. So we got a family affair going on today. So she's going to be uh, singing one of the lead songs today. And just to let you know, this young lady back here, <laughs> she only is going to have like two more services with us, I think. Was it? One, one more. This is, this is her last Sunday morning playing piano. So if you play piano, we'd be glad to talk with you as well. Okay, we just recruited her youngest, younger sister this morning, Becky. We sent Lainey to the top up there. So Lainey's in charge of the words today, being overseen by Sarah, which now is the boss of the whole entire AV system up there ever since her husband left her. I mean, no, he actually <laughs> deployed. He's deployed somewhere over, over the water somewhere. I won't tell you where that's at, but he's gone for a while. So please be praying for her. It's her first deployment. And there's nothing, I don't think, good about deployments as far as I can tell. And uh, the longest I've ever been away from my wife was three weeks on a missionary trip, and that was too long. Three weeks is too long. So I think it's about a nine- or ten-month deal she has. So please pray for Sarah, okay, so the Lord will help her. With all that said, we're going to ask you to stand to your feet. We're going to get ready to worship the Lord. We're going to have about three songs for you, then we'll get right into the, to the message today. Next Sunday, we will be having communion. So come prepare for that. If you're watching online, we're having communion next Sunday, so you'll be doing communion at home. And again, it's good to have all of you folks as people continue to come in the building. And, you know, praise the Lord for that. Let's pray. Father, we come in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for grace. We thank you for mercy. We thank you for your truth, your word. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice on the cross for us, Lord. God, for without that sacrifice, Lord, we would surely be destined to a place of eternal punishment, of death, Lord, separation from what real life is. Lord, we thank you today, God, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for enabling us to come together and to worship together, Lord. God, we know there's others that are home, Lord, others that want to be here, Lord, and we pray, God, that they would... They would muster the strength. They'd lust, muster the faith, Lord. They would, Lord, just um, begin to venture out, Lord, and begin to move back, Lord, to um, life in some sort of a normal way. And I hate this. I don't even want to say new normal because I don't believe that. I believe that God wants us to have an exceptional heavenly life here on this earth. So, Lord, we pray, God, that we have a, an abundant heavenly life here on this earth so we can get to that place. We pray, God, for anyone that we know, Lord, that might be afflicted by COVID-19. 
Lord, I, I got a message from a, a, a bishop, Lord, of the Pentecost Holiness Churches. I think it's his wife or some relative that has COVID, Lord. And we just pray, God, for, I think her name is Lynn. We pray for her right now. God, that you would just strengthen her, heal her. Lord, let your, Lord, let your antibodies, Lord, move through her body right now. Hallelujah. And bring healing, Lord. Strengthen her, Lord, in her inner being as you strengthen her body. We pray, God, others that may be sick we don't know about, we pray that you be with them. We pray for those that are shut in today, God, that are, that are suffering, Lord, that are uh, just enabled, Lord, to really function as normal. And we just ask you to be with them. And Lord, just, uh, we just worship you. We just worship you. Just lift your hands as Brandis gets ready to lead us. And Z, come on, just lift your hands. Come on, just begin to worship the Lord with us. Come on, we just worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. We just worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. Bless you, Lord Jesus. Oh, you worthy, Lord. You worthy, Lord. Jesus, you worthy, Lord. Jesus, you are worthy. God. You. just singing songs or words of adoration unto our worthy God. It's kind of like a prayer, but, but it's declarative and it says, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. And today we're going to hear a message about truth, Lord. And you are truth. No matter what's going on around us, Lord, you are the standard. You are truth. And we love you and we praise you, God. And even though the mountains may seem to be crumbling, Lord, or things may just seem a little unstable in the world around us, God, or a lot unstable, you are truth. You are anchor. You are solid, Lord. And these words and these songs today, God, are meant to build up truth in our heart, truth in our spirit, to build up our spiritual man inside, Lord. So that we don't have to listen to the voices of everything around us, God, but we can stay strong and anchored through the storms, Lord. So we thank you, God. We thank you for what you've done and we thank you for what you will be doing, Lord. Because you are faithful and you are true. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought deliverance the exodus of my heart you found me you freed me held back the waters for my release oh Yahweh you're the God you're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory hallelujah Hallelujah, you have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. It's like in the Old Testament. A cloud by day is a sign that you are with me. A fire by night 
is a guiding light to my feet. You found me. You found me. You freed me. Held back the waters for my release. Oh, Yahweh. You're the God who fights for me. Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're the God who fights for me. Lord of every victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea. You have led me through the deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, You stepped into my Egypt, you took me by the hand, you marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God, I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. You stepped into my Egypt, you took me by the hand, you marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God, I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. You're the God, you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah. You're the God, you're the God who fights for me, Lord of every victory, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, stepped into my Egypt, you took me by the hand, you marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, I'll sing of all you've done, death has swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. You stepped into my Egypt, you took me by the hand, you marched me out in freedom into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God, I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. Cause you stepped into my Egypt You took me by the hand You marched me out in freedom Into the promised land Now I will not forget you, God I'll sing of all you've done Death is swallowed up forever By the fury of your love You stepped into my Egypt you took me by the hand, you marched me out in freedom, 
into the promised land. Now I will not forget you, God. I'll sing of all you've done. Death is swallowed up forever by the fury of your love. You lead us, Lord, on dry ground into the promises of all you have, Lord. You lead us, Lord. You lead us, Lord, faithfully. You will lead us, Lord. You will lead us, Lord. Faithfully, you will lead us, you will lead us, you will lead us. To the promises you will lead us, Lord. You will lead us, Lord. You will not abandon us, Lord. You will make a way where there seems no way. You will lead us, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you're faithful. Thank you, Lord. We need not fear, Lord, knowing that you go before us. Lord, that you are leading us. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Be good, Lord. Walking around these walls, I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won for you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence you never fail me yet. I know the night won't last. Your word, it will come to pass. My heart will sing your praise again. Yes, 
Jesus, you're still enough. Keep me within your love, and my heart will sing your praise again. Your promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. You never fail, God. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I believe I see you do it again. You made a way when there was no way, and I believe I see you do it again. I've seen you move, you move the mountains, and I Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. You'll never fail me, God. You'll never fail. Lord, you never fail. Lord, you never will. Lord, you never fail. Lord, you never
As we lift our eyes, we lift our eyes. Oh, your death made a way. Come by your name. Oh, we're free in your grace. Oh, you're mighty to save. When faith is a fight, and when mountains are real, you lift us up. In your light we will heal As victors we see Of death swallowed whole And all that we hope Will be all that we
faith this morning. Oh, oh, oh your death made a way. Oh, oh, oh we overcome by, by your name. name. Oh, 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 we're free in your grace. Oh, oh, oh you're mighty to save. Come on and give him praise this morning. You're mighty, Lord. thank you Lord for your presence we thank you for victory in the name of Jesus today hallelujah we thank you Lord you gave us the power to overcome everything that could come our way Lord Lord you made a way for us where there seemed to be no way and God we thank you in Jesus name amen and amen let's give the Lord one more hand this morning before you sit down hallelujah, thank you, Lord. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. glory glory Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Woo. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Every week a few more come and you can feel the swelling. You can feel the swelling every week. A few more people into the house of the Lord with us. And we thank you, those of you that are bold and brave to come out. And we're down to five to five years of age, up to twelve, and um not for sure exactly what's going to happen next, but I'm sure they're going to work some way, somehow, to eventually get the nurseries fired back up. So um, we thank you for coming. Thank you for being so faithful to the Lord today. Well, um, I want to keep my mask on today just because it's easier to keep it on because it's one of those that kind of pull over your whole face and stuff. So uh, somebody turned it on to me, so it's easier to keep it on than when I go out to go walk out, get out of my car, and go back to the car to get the mask I forgot. So I just keep this around my neck. So uh, in the uh, wintertime, it's going to be kind of warm if we keep going with this. So it's going to be nice. It's going to be like a, a little furry collar around my neck. So, okay. Well, anyway, good to have you folks this morning. I missed some of you recently. I see some new people here. So it's good to have you new people. If you're new again, please listen very carefully. If you'll just get your phone out right now and just get your phone out. Verse Get your phone out and just go to your texting and text 757-320-5615. If you've never done that, you should do that because that will give you all the updates, everything that's going on here at Open Door Church. It will also let you know if your parents when the next step down will be for the kids uh, below the five mark. So just all that. So anyway, uh, I'd like you to get your Bibles out and turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 6, 10 to 17. You get tired of reading these passages here, of these 17 verses, 18 verses. But this is where we're at right now. There's a spiritual warfare going on. How many know that's a spiritual warfare going on? You know, COVID is there, but within the COVID or and outside the COVID, there's spiritual warfare going on. And some of you are in the midst of spiritual warfare, and some of you don't know what spiritual warfare is, or you'd never recognize it. You just think it's just everyday life. Well, there's something behind everything that goes on in your life, believe you me. Uh, I stopped to visit a guy that had just started coming back to church maybe three or four weeks ago. And he says, Pastor, he says, that word was from the Lord Sunday. It's only been about three or four weeks. He said, that word was from the Lord Sunday morning. He says, as soon as I walked in the work, in work, he owns his own business. He said, the fiery darts began to fly. I mean, he said he sat there and it just began to fly. And the Lord just gave him the ability out of the word Sunday morning just to deflect everything that happened because he had his shield of faith. He had a testimony card in his hand. He says, the shield of faith. And um, I was so thrilled. I feel the spirit of the Lord now when I'm talking about it. But I just felt so, so blessed and so honored that when uh, I shared uh, with him uh, the other day of what the Lord had done for him and enabled him to overcome the battle because of the word of the Lord. I just want you to understand something. We're just not preaching just to do something every Sunday. We're preaching something. We're giving you something, hopefully, that will help you get through 
your week, help you to deal with things that are coming your way, maybe things that were behind you. So in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, in relation to spiritual warfare, today we're going to be talking about, we're going to be talking about the belt of truth today, the belt of truth. So let's read Ephesians 6, 10 through 17. Finally, my brethren, and this was at the end of Paul's time here, of this letter uh, he's writing, is the very end of his letter here. He's already addressed a lot of things with the Ephesian church. He says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Under, just understand that, listen, you can't do this without God's strength. You just can't do it. Put on, that's a, that's a word, that's an action word. A put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the strategies or the strategies or the devices of the devil. Now, the devil has got all kind of ideas on how to disrupt your life and destroy your life. You've got to understand that. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual weakness in high places. And I may try to break that down after we finish these pieces of armor. Wherefore, take unto you, again, he's talking about taking, actively doing something. Take the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all that you can to do, continue to stand. Stand, therefore... Having your loins girt about with truth. Having your loins girt about with truth. That's where we're going to come back to in just a moment. Having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, and above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Now, we covered the helmet of salvation, and we talked about uh, the importance of that. We talked about the... Um, Shield of faith last week. And we're going to talk about the girdle today. Now, I'm hoping that with our new people here, that I can get the picture up of the entire Roman soldier. Just give us a little patience here. I want you to see the entire Roman soldier. Because we have to, I'm going to point out to you some things here. Let you see what it looks like. From the top of his head to the, to the bottom of his feet. We're coming. Be patient, folks. There we go. Oh, that's only, uh, I need the other one. We'll do that one next. I'll tell you what, leave that one up there. Just leave it up there. Can y'all see that? And then we'll do the next one. We'll do the whole. I want you to see this belt. See that belt? Y'all see that? Hello, you see the belt? All right. And then you see what's hanging off the belt? That's part of the armor that goes with that belt. Now, that belt also had, if you were, we could show some other pictures, but we won't. You can see other pictures and uh, other pictures that would be available if you go on the Internet and see this. There are other pieces that go on this belt. There's places for the, uh, for the sheath for your, for your knives or for your sword or whatever it is, uh, the scabbard. There's also a place that you could also attach a little bag for your food or for rations. Also, there's a place you can attach a belt if necessary. There's several things that can go to this belt. But this is very, very important, this belt, because I want you to understand it's in the middle of your body. It's the thing that kind of holds everything together about the armor. Now, as I begin to talk, I'm going to trust that they can get to the other picture with the entire armor so you can see the entire thing, what, entire, what a Roman soldier looked like. So we're going to talk about this belt and girding up our loins. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And, but just think about this in the natural. Those of you guys or ladies that wear pants or whatever, you have a belt, right? And what does the belt do? It kind of maybe hold the pants up, right? But it kind of connects everything. It kind of pulls everything together, that belt. And that's why the belt is important because it's the belt of truth 
that holds everything together. It's the belt of truth that connects everything. It's kind of the accessory that you have to have if you really want to go out to battle. And Paul uses this Roman soldier and his armor to convey the thoughts about the warfare we're going through every single day. Now, he saw soldiers every day, so these, these uh, implements and these pieces of this uh, uh, armor were very very apparent to him and he began to pattern that and show us that we need to be guarded in every way in a natural way is also in a spiritual way he gave these pictures to us to know that what we're dealing with is a tangible deal it's a relatable deal and it's doable for us I began to think about this for a moment. My mind was just all over the place thinking about this belt and thinking about what it does and thinking about truth. And all of a sudden, being the person I am, being the different kind of a person I am, I remembered a picture of superheroes, Batman specifically. Now, who's ever seen Batman before? Now, Batman is really not a superhero because Batman doesn't have any supernatural powers or any, he's not a, that kind of a guy, but he's got a belt, right? And that belt's got a big bat on that belt declaring, I'm Batman. So when you come for, you're Batman, right? But that Batman has got tool pouches all the way around. He's got, he's got you know, uh, Repelling ropes. He's got this. He's got that. He's got all kind of stuff on that belt. It just shows the importance of the belt. But you know what I got to thinking? Every single one of these superheroes have belts. Every one of them. Superman's got a belt, believe it or not. Some pictures give him a picture, a depiction of a big S on the belt. Some just give a little emblem. I went and looked. Captain America, whether it was the lady I mean, Captain America, the guy, he's got a belt. Captain Marvel, I think, male or female, they have belts. All these superheroes, they got belts. It's amazing kind of a thing. They got belts. It's just something to kind of hold things together, something that kind of meets in the middle, something that must be very, very important for the costume to be complete and to be total. So for us to be complete and total in our warfare, in our battle, we must have this belt. We must have something to pull everything together. We must have this thing called truth, which is what the belt speaks of. If we don't have truth, people, we have a lie. If we don't have truth, people, we have nothing to stand on because truth is the very thing that we as Christians stand on, the truth of God's word. Come on, the truth of God's word. So we have to have the truth. So this belt represents truth and how this truth brings everything together, how it pulls everything together, how it's so essential and it's so necessary. If you were to go out west, if you were to travel somewhere in the country or go down to a truck stop, you'll find they got special belts. They got big old belt buckles. I mean, great big buckles. They got motorcycle buckles. They got cowboy buckles. They got cowboy hat buckles. They got horse buckles. They got arrow heart buckles. They got face, they got any kind of buckle you want, but it goes on their belt. And when they're walking in, they, they're walking around and, and they're like, letting you know what kind of belt they got. What kind of buckle they got. And it lets you know where they are from and what they represent and who they are. Come on. The belt is very, very important. It lets everyone know who you are. It lets everyone know probably where you come from, what you represent, what you love, what you like. Your belt is who you are and who you represent. And our belt, our gospel belt, our belt of truth should be the way we should answer to life. It's what we should show forth, what people should see about us. There's not a physical belt, obviously, but there is a, a belt that kind of holds our life together. There's truth that holds us together, and we get truth from God's Word. Now, I want to ramble a little bit this morning because all this stuff was just flying around in my head. I was just writing it down as fast as I could, and it's kind of going to be a little disjointed. But I want to go back to Ephesians 6, 14 just for a moment. I want to read this section of the passage. Having your loins girt about with truth. Now, it's, you got to understand something. When, when the writers write something, it's just not the right something. 
There's a meaning to it. It represents something. He was talking about more than just a Roman soldier. He was talking about more than just the Romans' apparatus and the belt and, and how it looked. And you saw the, the, the leather with the metal on it. He had a purpose for this because he wanted us to, to be sure of what truth was all about and the necessity of truth. So when you talk about loins in the scripture, loins speak of something very, very, very particular. Loins are not something that you eat, John Mark. Not something that you grill, okay? I know that's what you were thinking about. Barbecuing some loins or smoking some loins. But it's not talking about those kind of loins. It's talking about the loins of a, of a person. A loin that represents procreative power. See, when it talked about loins in the scripture, it was talking about where a man's seed came from. And that procreation that came with that, and that life after him that came with that, that he could reproduce, going all the way back to the garden where God said to Adam and Eve, see, what be fruitful, multiply, and replenish your earth. He's talking about, hey, listen, you got to protect the very essence of life, of who you are. Because you are supposed to be a person that can actually reproduce after yourself. Now, in a natural, men and women, they procreate and then they produce children. The children look like mom or dad or a combination or maybe a generation before or two or three generations before. They look like somebody because of where they came from, right? At the wedding the other day, actually the wedding rehearsal, Lindsay's little, uh, Lindsay Davis's little baby was laying in the, in the little tub there, a little cradle, whatever you call that thing, a little basket. And, and I said, you know what? I said, that looks just like Chad. And he, she says, that's what I thought. She said, but everybody else says something else. Well, and I told Chad, I said, Chad, the baby looks like you. And he says, I forget. He said something. He's like, well, I hope that changes. <laughs> something of that nature. Well, if my grandkids look like me or my kids look like me, I don't, I'm not going to say that. I hope that changes. I want them to look like me. I want the people to see that these are my kids. I don't want there to be a question about, well, I wonder who they belong to. <laughs> see, when I was growing up, they used to say this to me when I was growing up, which is a complete lie. But just the guys were messing with us. These old farmers would say, oh, you look like the milkman's boy. <laughs> I mean, I'm like four or five or six or seven years old. I have no idea. What, we don't even have a milkman. OK, so what does that even mean? But he's talking about that with, that's in you that can create others like you. You see, when God gives us truth, we're not supposed to just let it be cast in the streets, trodden down, forgotten about. We're supposed to take that truth and we're supposed to distribute it or give it to others. That's why the truth is so important. That's why this belt is so important because it is everything that we have to offer, every bit of the instrumentation of the Spirit of God we have to offer that we're supposed to give. It also, another term it uses, not only pro procreative power, but the seed of generative power. It's also the place of our energy. It's the place of our life. It's the place where a source comes from us in the natural, but it's also in the spiritual, the truth. It's where we get our strength. It's where we get our source. Now, I was thinking about, you know, the next piece about this is a gird the loins. Girt your loins with truth. And I began to think about that. Well, maybe you ladies, older ladies, would think about a girdle. Similar thought, similar context. Well, you know what the girdle was for, right? It was to hold everything in and hold everything up. It's true. This girl was to hold things up and to hold things in. But, you know, I began to think about this a little bit because I used to work out in the gym lifting weights years ago. And weightlifters have a thing called a belt. And it's a, a big leather belt. And it's, it's wide at the back and it's a little small at the front. But they'll put that belt on it. And that belt is for a reason. My first understanding of that belt is to, is to strengthen the back, to secure the back so that nothing, nothing jumps out. And I went and looked it up. It says two main purposes for the weightlifting belt. It reduces stress on the lower back. Can I tell you something? 
If you're living with truth in your life, it's going to reduce stress for you. Hello? Truth. God's word will reduce the stress in you. But it also said this. It helps you not to hyperextend yourself when lifting the weights. Isn't it an amazing thing sometimes when we're about the king's business, about the Lord's business, we're living life, that sometimes we kind of get out of line. Come on. We kind of kind of feel like we've got back spasms or there's something going on with us. You know what? We are we're spasms because we're lacking truth in our life. We're lacking being enforced by the word of truth, whether it be in our mind, whether it be in our heart, in our daily life. So we have to really embrace God's truth. Another thing it said about this is that when people begin to lift weights, it said this belt will actually help a person learn how to tighten their ab muscles. So you know what the word of God does? You know what truth does? It helps us tighten up. Come on. It keeps us. Come on. It keeps us in a tight space. It keeps us in a place where we need to be at. This belt is so very, very important. This belt says it's called truth. It wraps around us. It should be all the way around us. The word truth speaks of here as stability, truth, certainty, trustworthiness, establish that which is faithful, that which does not fall or fail. The belt of truth, the belt of truth holds everything else together. It holds the breastplate of righteousness up. It holds all the, the essentials that go in that belt, that belt called a, a, a bautius or a singluum. It holds the scabbard for the sword, the sheath for the knife or the dagger, the metal plate leather on the front. Listen, that you saw that those Pieces of leather dangling down there. I never thought much about that. But that is a protective gear that protects the loins, protects where truth, where creation comes from. That's what it's there for. A man without that becomes very, very vulnerable. It served the purpose of being able to tuck in the soldier's tunic when he was in battle because their tunics were very long. And they would tuck it in so they could fight more efficiently. See, this thick belt did more than just hold up pants. It held everything together so that every single weapon was at the soldier's disposal, whether it was a rope, equipment, food, or rations. You have to understand something. The Word of God, God's truth, is what makes everything available to us in this life. I want you to think about this for a moment. We talked about the helmet of salvation and how that we had to wash our minds by the water of the word. You remember that? The word was very important in the helmet of salvation. When we talked about the shield of faith, the shield of faith also was very important in concerning the word of God because faith comes by hearing what? And hearing by the word of God. So you got the helmet. It's got something to do with the word or truth. You've got the shield has got something to do with the word of truth. And here again, we have this belt has something to do with truth and God's word. You see, in a real spiritual way, in a real godly way, in a real biblical way, God's people need to have a little more of the written page in their heart. And we've said this, and we've said this more than one time. You've heard it before, but I want to say it again. My wife and I were talking about this. People that are Christians, people that come to church, are a little biblically illiterate. There's nothing in their tool belt. Come on. They don't have any extra in their tool belt to fight with. They've got... For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And if I believe on him, I will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's about what they got. Or maybe Jesus Christ came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. They might have that one. Come on. They might have Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. They might have that one. But that's about all they got. Or, well, there's a few people that might know the Lord's Prayer. 
Well, listen, I've given you about five or six references of scriptures there, but that is just not enough, people. Come on. That is just not enough. I said, that's just not enough. You have 66 books that you can read and pull from and learn from. The word truth, I found, there's over 200 references of just the word truth, not truthful, truthfulness, but just the word truth in the scriptures. Truth of God's word, the truth that tells us how to get out of things, the truth of how to deal with situations, the truth of how to manage life, whether it's with our finances, with our families, with our children, with our wives, with our business, with the world we live in, with the heathen, with the Christian, it doesn't matter. The truth helps us in every single way that we live, but we don't have enough in us to be able to deal with life in general ways. Come on, it's part of the tool belt. If there's one thing... Or a few things here that we've always, if I use the word pride, I don't mean it's not a good word to use probably, but that we kind of hang our hats on is that we've been people of the word. And we've been people of integrity. And we've been people of faithfulness. And we've been people of character. And we've been people that talk about serving. Those are kind of the the catch-alls of this place. That's what's in our tool belt. That's what we've given. So there's one thing for sure. If you come to this church, you're going to hear the truth. If you come to this church, you're going to hear from the Bible. I'm just not going to tell you a bunch of stories and pat you on the back all the time. Come on. I want to try to challenge you to step your game up a little bit. Come on. To pick up the pace a little bit. Come on. To to climb a little higher. To reach a little further. That's what the truth of God will do for you. To dig a little deeper in your life. Come on. To begin to to meet the challenges. And if you live life, you're going to have challenges. If you live life, you're going to run into people that are going to cause you trouble and conflict. If you're married for a day, a week, a year, 40 years, 50 years, you're going to have a few conflicts here and there. Everything is not going to be heaven, people. So you need truth. Come on. You need some God's truth, which gives you wisdom, which gives you understanding, gives you direction, and gives you a strategy of how to deal with your life in every single way. Come on. Can you say amen to that? Come on. I'm telling you, I am all about the truth today. I'm all about God's word today. We've got to secure this truth, we got to get it wrapped around us. Come on, all the way around us. Not just part of all that belt went all the way around. It had a complete purpose. You see, this piece of armor, this truth protects us against lies. Against lies. What was the first sin in the garden? It was all about a lie, wasn't it? Come on, it was all about a lie. Hath not, hath God said. That's, a, that's, that's challenging the word of God. That's making God out to be a lie. And folks, once you start traveling down the course of lies, your life will become a lie. Hello. And everyone touching your life will be a part of your lie. Hello. It's not a nice place to be. But we have to understand that we have to be in God's truth. We have to know God's truth because we are truly in a battle. There's a spiritual warfare going on in all types of realms, all types of levels all around us. We have to have truth. We have to live in truth. We have to walk in truth. We have to read God's scripture. Even the Bible calls the devil the father of lies. Hello, people. Come on. John 8, 44, as we see in the scripture, the devil likes to operate in half-truths. That's why you have to know what the truth says. In Matthew chapter 4, when Jesus is battling the devil, you know, out in the wilderness, what does the devil do? The devil gives him the word, but Jesus says, listen, wait a minute, that word is distorted. That word is not presented in a truthful manner. It's not presented with with the foundation of God's principle underneath it. So Jesus fought back with the word. What are you going to do when the devil brings the word to you? He says, this is what the Bible says. Are you going to have enough grounded word in you to be able to make the right decision? Come on. There's been plenty of people come along and say, listen, the Lord told me to do what I did and they go kill somebody. Or they go out and they commit adultery. They have multiple wives. I'm telling you, and they use the word of God Come on, they use the word of God to justify their evil doings. Come on, their ungodliness. Come on, they do it all the time. I, and, and I just want to say this. This is one thing I have to, I have to say about this church. 
I've never, ever... How should I say this? I've always been pretty sure that if something false came across the, the bow of this pulpit from the time I began to, to, to now, I, don't, I, couldn't, I couldn't think of anybody that would drink the Kool-Aid if it was false. Hello? I couldn't think of anybody. I didn't know of anybody. I didn't believe anybody. So you know what? If I understood that, you know what that did for me? That helped me be sure that, hey, listen, whatever comes across the bow of this pulpit is going to be truth. It's going to be real. My wife feels the same way. We deal with life according to truth. You understand? Truth. Not half truth, but truth. And if we don't have an understanding of truth, the rest of the armor is useless. Hello. The rest of the armor is useless. Guess what? The word's got something to do with the helmet. The word's got something to do with the shield. The word's got something to do with the belt. The word's got something to do with breastplate of righteousness. The word's got something to do with your feet shod of perspiration of the gospel of peace. Your word's got something to do with the sword of the spirit. Come on. The word connects every piece of this thing in a very, very real way. So we have to know the word. Everybody say word. We have to know the Word. And to know the Word, you have to read the Word. Come on. At least you got to read one verse a day. Please, one verse a day. My goodness. One verse a day. Just read one verse a day. I don't know where to start. If you don't know where to start, you text me. I will send you a verse every day. If one verse a day is too much for you, I'll send you one verse a week. I can make that happen with our texting machine. Come on. I can just walk in on Monday morning or send a text to, to Kayla. Say, Take Kayla, send this to every single person in the church. Just one verse. If you want that, you let me know. If you want a verse every day, let me know. I'll make that happen. Come on. If you want two verses a day, I think you're getting carried away. I might think you're really having revival in your life if you want two verses a day. I don't know. But I'm telling you, people, if you need to help, we'll help you. We're supposed to be equipping the saints. If that's what it takes, then bless God. That's what we'll do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me just talk about truth for a minute. I'm so excited about this. Years ago, I, there used to be a, a show on. Some of you are going to be old enough to remember this. The rest of you are going to think, what is he talking about? It used to be, be a, a show called Truth or Consequences. Does anybody remember that? Oh, yeah, about 20 people. Truth or Consequences. Well, it's just what it is. It's either the truth or a consequence. Come on. So if we want to live in truth, truth is going to keep us from bad consequences. But if we're going to not follow the truth, guess what? There's going to be consequence. Simple as that. Truth or consequences. Whenever we don't follow truth, there's going to be serious consequences. There's going to be pain. There's going to be despair. There's going to be penalties, folks, because you reap what you sow. Come on. It's true. That's why truth is so important. I read in the scriptures. It says truth is falling in the streets. The lack of truth caused failure in the garden with Adam and Eve. The lack of truth caused a brother to kill another brother. Come on, living in a lie, living in, in hatred, not understanding what life was all about. Truth is so, so very important. It's what holds everything together. Truth is what's kept me alive. Truth is what's helped me live. Truth is what keeps me um, doing what I'm doing. It's truth. We need the word and truth in our hands. We need the word and truth around our waist, circling around us. We need the word of truth in our mind. We need God's truth everywhere because this truth is what energizes us. It's what connects us to God and to his presence. See, when we walk in truth, it puts us in the best position to win daily. Come on, to win daily. Think about that. 
I'm going to say it again. If we walk in truth, it puts us in the best position to win. That's pretty good. We're living in a world of lies, people. We're living in a world at best half truths. Most of what you see is not true. Most of what you hear is not true. Come on. That's where we're living. So we have to learn how to fight the fight. We don't have to learn how to live in truth. We have to learn how to discern truth. Come on, and discern what's going on. And as I said, the word truth is mentioned 200 times plus in the scripture. And I want to read some verses to you because I think this is where kind of the rubber meets the road for us today. Deuteronomy 32.4, when I began to study this and began to... Uh, reminisce about this and meditate on this Deuteronomy 32 4 we used to sing a song about this he is the rock and his work is perfect for all his ways of judgment a God of truth everybody say truth truth without iniquity just and right as he has in other words God does not make mistakes we may not understand everything but God does not make his mistakes and I hate it when people say well the Bible contradicts itself maybe you're one of those people the Bible contradicts itself. The Bible does not contradict itself. You just didn't read long enough. You just didn't get the context. Come on. Hello? If I read a verse over here, and I go run and read a verse over here, and they're five or 600 years apart or 1,000 years apart, and I'm thinking, wow, this, this, is lie. this makes this out to be a lie. No, you have to read the whole thing. You just can't pick and pull what you want to. This is not, this is not Sam's Club, folks. Come on. you got to take the whole thing. And I can tell you what, it's kind of like this. I love the uh, preaching this message. You know, when, when David's coming into town and he's dancing before the ark of the Lord, some of you know the story, some of you don't, you're going to look it up, your ark and David come back, bringing it back. But his wife, Michael, looks out the window. Now, you know as good as I do, if you look out a window, you can't see everything that's going on outside, on either side, right? Not on the left side, the right side, the top side, the bottom side. You have no idea what else is going on. But Michael looks out the window, and she sees David, not in his kingly garb, but in a linen ephod. And he's dancing, and she sees some ladies that are there with him. And she says, David, what are you doing? You're just making a fool of yourself out here in front of everybody. Right? She only sees a little bit. Can I tell you something? Before you make judgments about things, make sure you see what's in front and what's behind, what's underneath and what's over top. Before you make a decision about anything, whether it's buying a car or buying a dress, ladies, or buying a suit or a pair of pants, come on, or a pair of shoes, make sure that you really investigate things. Do you know what happens to Michael because of this? David looks up to her and says, you don't even know what you're talking about, lady. You have no idea what's coming down the road. But the ark of God is coming back. We went back and got the ark of God. Come on. We've been absent the presence of God, and we're bringing it back into town, and we're having a celebration. Hallelujah. And you're making small talk about me? You missed the whole point. You know what happened to Michael? She wasn't in truth. She ended up with consequences. You know what consequences were? She was smitten barren for the rest of her life, all of her life, because she didn't want to wait and find out what truth was. You see, the Bible says this, wise people hold their tongue, but a fool utters everything that's in his heart. Think about that. I'm paraphrasing those scriptures. Truth will help you not speak too early, okay? Hello? Truth, swift to hear, James, swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, because the anger of man does not work the righteousness of God. Hello? If you don't know, ever learn another verse, people, learn that verse. Swift to hear, it'll save your marriage. Swift to hear. It'll save your relationship with your kids. Swift to hear. It'll save your job. Come on. Swift to hear. It'll save your neighbors. Come on. It'll save your family. Swift to hear. Slow to speak. 
but I just got to say something. Yeah, and it's going to get you in trouble. Just shut up. You know what? It's good to kind of dim in here because I can't see everybody's facial. I'm kind of looking to see if, yeah. There's one person waving at the back back there. Yeah, you want to you want to buy what I'm talking about? Buy truth. The Bible says buy truth. I'm going to read that verse in a minute. Buy truth. Let's look at this quickly. God of truth without iniquity. Turn to the book of Psalm 51, verse 6. This is what the Bible says God desires. David's writing this. This is after David has messed up his life. This is after David has entered into a, a bad relationship. And, and he says in, in the very end of this chapter here, he said, Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, you shall make me to know wisdom. God desires truth to be in your heart. Come on, in the, in the very conscience of your being, he desires truth. Proverbs 3, verse 3. Let me quickly move along here. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind mercy and truth around your neck. Write mercy and truth upon the table of your heart. Come on, folks. Truth is so important. Truth is so important. Truth that builds up. Truth that forsakes failure. Come on, truth. Proverbs 23, 23. Moving quickly. By the truth, it says, and sell it not. By wisdom and instruction and understanding. That's the way that should really read. This speaks of the value of truth. It speaks about don't give up on or don't let go of the valuable truth that God's given to us. The word by means this, to erect, to create, to extend, procure, to purchase, to have as your own, to attain. Come on. To possess, to recover Truth, come on, recover truth, buy truth, extend truth, let cr truth be created in you, and let truth erect something powerful in your life. Buy the truth and sell it not. John 1, 14, talking about Jesus Christ, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. What was Jesus full of? Grace and what? Truth. Grace and truth. John 1, 17 goes on to say, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Wow. I know some of you are thinking about this verse I'm getting ready to read. You're thinking, oh, are you going to read this verse? When are you going to read this verse? John 8, 31 and 32. I know you want to read it. Some of you might know this. It might be one of your favorite verses. It might be one of the few verses you know. Then Jesus said to the Jews, which believes on him, if you continue in my word, if you are wrapped in my word, come on, if you let the word of God encircle your life, if you let it be in front of you, it let it be in your head, if you let the word of God continue in your life, then you're my disciples. You're my disciples indeed. And you shall know what the truth and the truth shall make you free. Free from what? Free from lies. Free from failure. Free from doing things that are ungodly. The truth is what's going to keep you in the right way. It says, even the spirit of truth Jesus talks about the world cannot receive will keep you the spirit of truth. Romans 1.25. I just want to give you these verses. Because some of you, this is the most Bible reading you'll have in maybe the next year. Romans 1.25. Who changed, listen, who changed the truth of God into a lie. See, there are people that can take what's truth, what's real, and they can twist it into a lie. You can go to court, right? You can go to court and the first, all the witnesses can go up for the prosecution and then all the witnesses can go, you go oh yeah, he's definitely, he's done. And then the next guy comes up and he shares his side, Richard, come on. You hear the other side of the story? It's like, oh my God, he's going to set him free. And then you got these 12 people. They got to figure out what to do with what's been said on both sides because somewhere between the prosecutor and a defense, somewhere between those two, 
That's really where the truth is. So being on the jury is not an easy task. It doesn't even pay good. Come on. It's inconvenient. You understand that? But somebody's got to do that. Just so happens, every time I get that letter, I'm going somewhere. So I call and say, listen, can you excuse me? So thankfully, I've never served on a jury. Now, my wife served on the grand jury before, right? That was no fun, was it? Because the grand jury is the first part. The jury of conviction is the second part. But it says, listen, they changed the truth of God into a lie. And you can listen to what seems like truth over here. This guy over here can take the same thing. And by the time he's finished carving on it, it looks like a lie. But somewhere in the middle, it was where truth is. And guess where Jesus died at? In the middle. In the middle. Come on. In the middle. Between heaven and between earth. Between heaven and between hell. Between a thief that didn't believe and a thief that did believe. Come on. Hello. He died. Jesus is... Everything about God, everything about truth is always in the middle, trying to pull truth together. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Romans, and you can read that and you go on to see where they ended up in some terrible, egregious sins. Romans 8, I mean, Romans chapter 2, verse 8. But unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Isn't it a funny thing? People say, I'm not obeying what that says. I'm not going to obey anything. But either you obey truth or you obey disobedience. You're still obeying something. Something is still running your life. Something is still in control. Almost done. Second Timothy 2.15. Look at your neighbor says, almost done. Oh, you don't care. Okay, we'll keep going then. 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show. Listen, study. Put some energy in to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing what? The word of truth. Come on, people. you got to invest some time in the Bible. Hello. Well, I don't understand it. Well, get somebody to help you understand it. That's what discipleship's called. That's what Bible study's called. We can Zoom meeting you. We got people that'll be glad to sit down with you. We got books. We got, we got, uh, there's, there's Bibles that even a first grader can understand. Come on, I'm serious. There's Bibles that you can understand. Don't make King James an excuse for your lack of interest. Come on, Hello. Just because it ain't King James, you know, you can still read another Bible as long as, as long as it's got everything there it needs. If you have a question about one of these other Bibles, then you talk to me or my wife or one of our guys here, one of our people here, and we'll tell you what's okay. Study to show yourself approved. Invest yourself in God's Word. Second Peter 1.12, Wherefore I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, that you know them and be established in the truth. Peter said, listen, I don't care how many times you've heard me say this, listen, Get in the truth. Get a part of the truth. Live in truth. Talk about truth. Enjoy truth. Desire truth. Covet truth. Read about truth. He said, I'm going to keep telling you until you get tired of hearing it. Truth is what's going to keep you in the way. Finally, in John, 1 John 4, 5 and 6, they are of the world. Therefore, speak they of the world and the world hears them not. We are of God. He that knows God hears us, and he that is not of, the, of God hears not us. And this is the kicker right here, this verse. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And I really wanted to make sure I got to this verse today because that is the truth. There's the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And they're always pulling they're always pulling. Come on, they're always out there. They're always making themselves known. The world presents every day of your life what is truth and what's error. But the deal is this, is you're not going to know which is which unless you know what God's Word says. 
Come on, unless you know what God's Word says. You're not going to know which is which. If you haven't paid attention, you're not going to know what's which. See, obviously, obviously, I go back to the garden. Obviously, Eve didn't really pay attention because she didn't understand where truth and error was. She didn't realize the consequences of walking in a lie. I tell people this all the time. I said, whatever you do, does it just affect you? It affects everyone that's connected to you and everyone that's connected to those people, and it just keeps on going. Like if you throw a rock into a, into a pond, it affects every molecule in the pond. It really does. We tell people that come from broken homes. We tell them all this, and we see it all the time. You don't realize if you break this covenant right here, how many lives it will affect and how many people will be hurt and how much debris you're going to be picking up or trying to elude the rest of life. And I can say that because I came from a broken home and I saw, I saw and lived through all the debris and all the failures that were there. If you came from a home that stayed together, then you don't know how blessed you are. But if you come from a home that's been broken, there's a lot of fallout. There's a lot of brokenness there. There's a lot of stuff that we're always picking up. There's a lot of glass shards laying around that we always end up stepping on and hurting us. Truth will keep you. Truth will keep you. Truth, I said truth will keep you. Truth is what will keep you, folks. Remember that belt is what keeps you together. It's what holds you together. It's what holds everything up. Come on. Truth. This piece of armor is so much more valuable than we could ever dream or realize. I want to read this verse again in John 8, 31 as I close. Jesus said to them again, Jews which believed unto him, if, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. First question is this. Brandis, can you come play something, Brandis, you think, just on the keys? I don't know everyone here. I don't know who's watching today. But do you know the person of truth, which is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ said, I'm the way, the truth, and life, John 14, 6. If you don't know Jesus as the person of truth in your life, that not only did he die on the cross for you, but he came to help you live differently. He came to help you live abundantly. He came to help you live a life of victory. If you don't know Jesus Christ today, I just want to invite you to know Jesus today, the person of truth. But I also want to challenge you and ask you this question. Do you know the spirit of truth? I'm not talking about your salvation. I'm talking about knowing Jesus in this daily living way this daily guiding lay, way, that this truth that's in Jesus guides you every day. And maybe you've been having some struggles in your life. Maybe things haven't been going quite the way you thought they were going to be going. But you know what? I think if you allow the spirit of truth to begin to come and embrace your life, the comforter, which is the spirit of truth, to come and embrace your life, then you can separate yourself from the consequences that come from bad decisions, bad motives, bad intentions. And I just want to invite you today, whether you're here or whether you're at home, I, and I think people here in the building, the spirit of truth that would guide us every day is so very, very important. I want to challenge you to read your word more. I want to challenge you to open your heart up to God's words more. I want you to understand that God's word is living. It's breathed. It was inspired. And I love the way one guy put it. He says, God breathed the words on paper. They just come from God himself onto the paper. It was such a touching time I, when I heard that. It just meant so much. So, Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to stand to your feet. I just pray in the name of Jesus right now. Just hold your hands out. Not up, just hold them out. And, Lord, I, I pray that you just give. Just give your people the desire for truth in the inward parts, Lord. That's what you desire for us, to have truth in the inward parts, Lord. 
that truth would lead us, truth would guide us, truth would create in us, truth would help us, truth would temper us and shape us and mold us. Truth would help us in our decisions. Truth would help us not to be irrational. That truth would help us measure everything. The truth would help us to hold our tongues. The truth would help us help us to act and respond in a godly way. It's only God's truth. The truth would help us walk in forgiveness. The truth would help us walk in honor. Truth, Lord. That when we look back, we'll have no regrets. <laughs> Come on. When we say something, we won't regret what we say. When we say something, it won't lead a leave a tornado or disaster because truth has governed our life. Wow, truth. Truth has been exercised in our life. Lord, we just ask you to give it truth to us. Lord, let us walk in truth, Lord. Let us embrace truth, and Lord, let us hunger for truth. Let us hunger for it. Let us have, Lord, an insatiable desire for truth, Lord. That, God, we can't get enough of your word. We wouldn't be satisfied with a verse or two verses. We'd, be, we'd just be satisfied with a full meal. He brought me to his banqueting table, his banner over me is love. Lord, bring us to the banqueting table where we can enjoy and receive truth. God, we ask you, Lord, to help us walk in the spirit of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can you give the Lord a hand for the word today? <clears throat> now, just remember, before you leave your seat, put your mask on and just meet me at this back door and we'll greet you on the way out the door, all right?